Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. You may remember that Robert Mueller's investigation was created originally with a very clear purpose, finding evidence of Russian meddling in the U.S. elections. Putin hacked our democracy. And so this investigation was going to look into possible collusion between Russians and Americans. There's supposed to be a lot of evidence of that. There hasn't been. Virtually none has turned up. Instead, the investigation has continued, though, and it's evolved, just as some of us warned it would a year ago just like all of these investigations do. It has, again, like all of them, become an endless all-purpose investigation of the president, his life, his business, his friends, even his sex life, as we've seen this last week. Is this a good idea? Is it a precedent we want to set? Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney is a Democrat representing New York, and he joins us tonight. Congressman, thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Would you be comfortable with a permanent investigation into your life and dealings? No. So, look, I understand that people don't like Trump and they object to the way he conducts his business and object to the ideas that undergird his decisions. I get it. But this is not the way to deal with it, is it? Well, if you're referring to the investigation that relates to the president's sex life, uh, don't care about that. But that's what the investigation has become. So look, I, I think you could make a case, and I agreed with you to this extent, if there's evidence that a political figure who became president colluded with the foreign government, big deal. Like to know if that's true. Maybe right. it's and, true. And, and luckily we have a way to do that, which is to allow Bob Mueller to do his job. Uh, okay. But the question is, what job is he doing? And based on the behavior we've seen in the last week, this is an argument, not an argument against the Mueller investigation. It's an argument against what the investigation apparently has become. Well, luckily, and I think wisely, the special counsel handed that investigation off to someone else. So his focus remains on what he was charged to do. So I think this would fall into the distinction without a difference category. Well, if check it out. We, we've got, we're in less than a year on this thing. Uh, we've got 22 indictments, 100 felonies, 13 Russians, by the way, and uh, five guilty pleas. That's a pretty good day's work, and I think we should let him finish his job. Are all guilty pleas the same? Is pleading guilty to lying to a federal agent the same as pleading guilty to colluding with the foreign government? Or are they in totally different universes? Of course not, but some of those may actually be going lightly on these guys to get their cooperation. Time will tell. But I think it's, it's absolutely fair to say this special counsel ought to deliver or wind up his work. I don't want it to go on forever. Uh, you know, Benghazi took two years. I think that's way too long. But I'll tell you what, indicting 13 Russians for interfering with the election is exactly what he was charged to do. I'm glad they were indicted. I hope you are. Whatever, and I'd like to find whatever. out. I mean, yeah, I guess I'm whatever. glad. I mean, no, whatever. I mean, let's be totally real. Well, First it, of all, none of these people are going to trial. Second, it's not even clear to me what they did that threatened our democracy. But, but that's not the point. The point is that we saw this week federal agents basically break into the office of the president's lawyer in search of facts about the Access Hollywood tape and a porn star. Right. I think when you say break in, you mean execute a, a, a legal warrant. They came in but, by force. I mean, they they weren't right. welcome. And they that's, what, that's what people do when they execute a search but is warrant. It, I, I'm aware that's of called that. due process, I'm, by the way. I'm aware and, of that, but is it a good thing? I mean, so I just want a Democrat but, but, to say, but, hey, no, I'm not for this. Let me make it easy on you. I don't care about the president's sex life. You What's can put mean? me on record as not wanting no, no, to know at all about I'm Donald Trump's sex life. It's not whether you care about his sex life. It's whether you're comfortable with federal agents executing search warrants in order to learn more about his sex life. Are you comfortable with that? I don't care about Stormy Daniels. I don't care about a porn star trying to make money. I don't care about cable news trying to get ratings on it. I do care about, and you should care, about Russians interfering with our election. Okay, and, I, and I think it is really important to point out that unlike Ken Starr, who made his whole investigation about sex, Bob Mueller has handed that off to a Trump appointee. It doesn't mean And, and we'll let anything. that go where it It doesn't it wants. mean anything. It means the, something the Mueller, very important. No, it, Again, it's a distinction without a difference, but I just want to press you on well, let me ask you whether a you're specifically you comfortable there. with the FBI going in with a warrant into the president's lawyer's office in search of materials related to a sex life. Are you comfortable with that? What yes I've said no? several times is I don't care about that. No, but, but not, I, that's not an answer I, to the question. Are, well, you, are you comfortable with what the FBI just did? I, I hope you and I both agree that if in the course of the, uh, of the Mueller investigation, he finds evidence of other crimes unrelated to his investigation, that it would be wrong to ignore them. And, and so I think the proper thing to do is to hand it off to someone else. In this case, a Trump appointee. But it is not fair to say that's a distinction without a difference. That's staying focused. Right. I, I'm not going to ask you the same question for the fifth time because you're not going to answer it. I just want you to say I think this with you. is not what we were looking for when we appointed a special counsel. This actually looks very much like right. what Democrats complained about Tucker, 20 years if ago. You can't, with good if cause. you can't understand that, that Bob Mueller faced a choice, do it himself. 
hand it off to somebody else or ignore it. I think it would have been but wrong to is, do it himself. I think it would have been wrong to ignore it. He handed off somebody else. But what is He's it? What do you focused. imagine? Hold on. What do you imagine the crime would be? I'm watching liberals who for generations have defended civil liberties look into the camera and say a payoff to a porn star is a violation of campaign finance law. Right. I don't That's care about insane. that. That's insane. I don't care so about that. So what would be the crime, the potential crime? I just told you I don't care. No, but... Why wouldn't you care about what the FBI is doing to someone's personal lawyer? You should care about that. You're a lawmaker. Look, I'm, I'm focused on what Robert Mueller is charged to do, and that is to tell us whether the Russians interfered with our election. We know they did. And whether anybody in this administration was, was playing footsie with them. I'm glad he's staying focused on that. You should be, too. I, so, I think, I, let me answer your question. I think it is disturbing when the federal government is going into somebody's sex life. Oh, thank but you. if he has evidence of crimes, then it would be wrong to ignore them, and he has handed them off to a separate okay. office. What's I wrong just want to get you should, to concede you're uncomfortable with it. Should he ignore so, them? So why? What, I mean, what, it depends what, what, what the crime is. Well, that's exactly he right. He sent Martha and Stewart are, to prison yeah, right. for lying to a federal investigator right. about an investigation into something completely different. So can we? That's can technically we, a crime. It's so, wrong to do that. So Tucker, so all I'm saying is, is why don't we let these folks do their job? We are letting and them do their job. You're not calling for well, me for. I'm not calling for anyone to stop. Then how about this? Well, so you. Why don't we, so then you are comfortable with them investigating Michael Cohen? What I'm comfortable with. Because I'm I wondering am, if you let them do will. their job. I, I think you anytime become, you're why not have, why not have this? Why not have, just so that partisanship doesn't taint this process or these investigations in any way, let's have a permanent office of special counsel who floats above the justice system, again, on a permanent basis with no timetable and no budget limit, who can investigate every sitting lawmaker or executive. Why yeah, not right. do that? Yeah, terrible idea. But in this oh, wait, case... Why? Oh, wait, because it's not case, against Trump. No, but in this case, you've got a bunch of Republican senators as recently as today. I could get, saying, you know what, guess who cares so, what Republican senators think? Right. Not me. Right, but you so just but asked, I'm, I'm asking you a question about principle. Excuse me, excuse me. You just asked for bipartisanship. You've got a bunch of conservative Republican senators. Senator Grassley, Senator Tillis, don't care what Senator Graham. Think. I mean, I literally couldn't be less interested. I want to know what My you My point think. is Why that would you, you ask for a bipartisan that? process. You're getting one. And what they're saying is, let this guy, Bob Mueller, do his but job. But why not let period. him continue to do his job into the next administration? And by the way, focus his attention on Congress. I said, you have lawmakers I, like I yourself. Who knows what you guys are doing? Why don't we have someone independent of DOJ looking into your activities? What's wrong with that? If you're not guilty, right. why would you worry? Right, Tucker. What what I said is that is that there you should like be that, huh? there should be look at I, I think I think you'd I think you'd see a lot of investigations of members of Congress and a bunch of people getting whacked and yeah. that's good. Good. We got way too much dead wood in Congress and we got a bunch of corrupt people. I'm glad that they're going. Amen. But I'll tell you what, and I live under the same scrutiny every day. But let me tell you something. I think you're right that you shouldn't have an open ended independent counsel uh -huh. investigations. I'm trying to agree with you. But when you've got credible evidence of serious wrongdoing, 13 indicts, 22 indictments, 13 Russians, 100 felonies, Tucker, and you have a bipartisan, you have a bipartisan, you have a bipartisan consensus right. okay. on, on letting this investigation simply do its work. Yeah, and look, I'm, I'm with it. I just wanted to, let's, let's roll it up and get to the business of running the country. Fair enough. Thank you, Congress. It's less than a year, and he's got a bunch of indictments, and we should finish it. Yeah, really, I feel a lot safer uh, now that Paul Manafort's uh, in jail. Thank you very much My for joining us tonight. Mark Stein is an author and columnist, and he joins us tonight. I actually kind of, I'm carried away with my own rhetoric tonight, Mark, and I love the idea of a permanent independent counsel who investigates everybody in power. And why not, why stop with lawmakers? Why wouldn't he get into the guys who run Google and Facebook? I mean, just sort of someone who, you know, isn't encumbered by the corruption of the DOJ and who has an endless budget. What's wrong with that? Yeah, that's right, because there's, uh, there's millions and millions of people, and there's laws against everything, and if you happen to be the guy that they decide to look into, uh, they can find something, or they can turn your associates, or in this case, they can put the squeeze on your lawyer, which uh, I don't care what the congressman says. I find what happened with Michael Cohen absolutely repulsive. Uh, Lawyer-client privilege is something that was established by uh, Elizabethan times as a basic principle of common law, uh, the idea that you, you, you kick the guy's door down and you take everything and we're supposed to be reassured because the prosecutor's colleague who's not working on the case will go through everything and decide what is or isn't 
uh, covered by attorney-client privilege is ludicrous. The New well, wait, York wait, Times wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. I have to interrupt you there. You're not from yeah. this country, so you may not read the New York Times. Hmm. But they assured us two days ago that if you're not guilty, you shouldn't worry about attorney-client privilege, that the president no, no. really has no cause for worry and no cause to hold on to that sacred ancient right if he isn't a criminal. So why should he yeah, be no, I. I saw that in the New York Times, and what was also interesting to me is that the story began by announcing that they'd been uh, briefed by three people involved with the investigation. So we've already got three people leaking to the New York Times that, uh, that there's nothing to worry about, uh, that if they do, if, if this other guy who goes through all the stuff does happen to come uh, uh, across something interesting, he's not going to leak it like the three guys who've already leaked it. Federal justice. I'll get annoyed because that congressman was far too sanguine, Tucker. Federal justice is a toilet in this country. It operates on blackmail because everybody knows, Michael Cohen knows, that if you get dragged into court, they have a 97% conviction rate. No, so that they can't go be right. To because that's, I mean, they, that's Soviet level. Is it really 97%? That's right. Now, if they take you into court, they, it's 97 percent. And so uh, and so these guys, they say, well, we lean on him. And uh, you say you're looking at 30 years in jail. They're supposedly looking at Michael Cohen because he had a New York taxi medallion business. He ran a fleet of New York taxi cabs. Nobody. You're not telling me that in whatever hotel room he was sitting at, that he had his New York taxi cab documents from a decade ago. And and was shredding them in the on the 37th floor of the Comfort Inn or whatever the hell he was in. I mean, this is corrupt. And and if uh, Donald Trump is looking for a replacement for the useless Jeff Sessions, I'll gladly volunteer because federal justice is a disgrace and someone needs to clean. At the same time, Tucker, while I'm getting annoyed here, uh, the FBI won't hand over the unredacted communication to Congress that started all this thing. So we have an out of control federal prosecutor who can seize everything he wants from his subject's lawyer and the FBI who work for you and the American people won't even hand over to Congress the unredacted document that started this. Federal justice is corrupt and needs someone serious cleaning it up and if Jeff Sessions won't do it he should get out of the way and make way for someone who, who would. I don't know why the president would need a lawyer if he's innocent. Why do any of us need lawyers if we're innocent? No, Mark? no, no, There's no. That's 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 true. That's true. <laughs> More Mark Stein. I, I wonder if ahead. that applies to New York Times editors and New York Times journalists. Let's all go and poke around in all their stuff. After all, if they're innocent, they've got nothing to fear. Yeah. Give me your, the password mm. to your Gmail if you're innocent. No. Mark Stein will be yeah. back with us in just a minute to discuss the new plan out of California to fix homelessness by building homeless shelters in your backyard. Stay tuned.